guys, it's me Stace. Welcome back to another new series that we are doing. This time it is for our Christmas in July. This will probably be a two-part series. We are making this really cute 3D Christmas cuckoo clock. I'll bring it closer so you can see the front of it. It does have a real working clock on it. On this side we have some peppermint candy. This side over there is a Christmas tree. There's also a reindeer on top. Really fun. This is a rather detailed project. I want to say me and the hubby spent two hours putting the entire thing together. Right, let's go over what you'll need to make this project. Alright, so as far as supplies to make the project, the first thing you will need is a Cricut Explore machine along with the Cricut Access Plan. That is where this file is located. As far as supplies, you want to pick up a chipboard. Now the instructions for this project called for a heavyweight chipboard. I went ahead and got a medium weight one. You can see the medium weight is pretty thick. I had my machine set to custom inside the Design Space software. I chose the heavyweight chipboard. I used my deep cut blade housing and I want to say did a multi cut of three. It did not cut all the way through this. We had to go back in with an exacto knife and kind of finish cutting around. So that did take longer. So it did not cut all the way through. So I'd probably recommend maybe picking up a lighter weight chipboard and see how that goes. But you'll need four pieces of 12 by 12 of either the lightweight chipboard or the medium weight chipboard. But again, if you're using the medium weight, keep in mind my machine did not cut all the way through. The next thing you will need is some white cardstock. You need 12 of those, eight and a half by 11, along with ink in your printer. Because all the pieces here, as far as the decorations, they're all done on the printer, then cut out with the Cricut Explore machine. You can also see we have a clock piece there. The clock piece we picked up at Walmart is just a little clock movement kit. I want to say it was maybe three or four dollars. But you want to make, take notice with the clock, if you see mine here, this clock will not function. It is moving. It is a working clock. But this part here, this hand, is hitting that piece there. So if I want to go there, this is going to stop working because it can't go around. So the circle here measures about three inches. So you want to make sure your hands aren't any longer than that or wider than that. Otherwise, the clock piece won't work. Then you will need some kind of glue to glue all the pieces together. All right, let's go to the computer and we will get started. Alrighty, at the computer you want to go to Cricut.com slash design. You will see this screen, upper left hand corner where it says account. Click on that to sign in. Enter in your email and your password. When you see your name in that green box, that verifies that you are logged in. You want to go to the right and click on where it says all categories. Go down and click on Christmas. On this screen we're going to scroll pretty much all the way to the bottom until we come across the clock. See, there's lots of really cute Christmas projects. We'll, we'll be making quite a few of these for our making on Monday projects for this month. All right, so keep on scrolling down. It's near all the all the projects that are gold. So there's all the gold projects. Go down a little bit more. It's next to the elf. All right, so there's the elf, and there's our clock. It is called the 3D Christmas Cuckoo Clock. Go ahead and click on that. This will bring up the preview window. On the left hand side, you will see all the materials you will need. It calls for 12 sheets of 8.5 by 11 white cardstock, four sheets of the 12 by 12 chipboard, either a glue or a spray adhesive, a clock movement kit for a quarter inch thick base, and the clock case should be two to two and a quarter inches square, and of course the inkjet printer. It does not tell me here though what weight of chipboard I need, but if you go to the right hand side under the instructions for number three, it says here to choose a heavyweight chipboard from the drop down menu. So again, I chose a medium weight chipboard to cut these pieces out. It did not cut all the way through. So you might want to use a lighter weight car, uh, a lighter weight chipboard. All right, bottom right, go to click on customize. And I do have my machine on the dial set to custom. And you want to give this page a second or two to load. There's lots of images on here with detail. And all these colorful pieces, they're going to be ran through your printer, then have the machine cut them out for you. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here, bottom left-hand corner is on the design space. Click on the minus sign one time so I can see all the pieces. Now, while we, while we were cutting this out, we did come across one flaw in the design, which is these pieces here. These are for the roof. I'm going to bring this piece down and also this piece here. And you can see both of these green pieces have those slices in them, but these two pieces they attach to do not. Only one does, and you do need them slice marks in there to have them clip onto the roof. So this piece here is a wrong piece. I'm going to choose that one and delete it. 
click on the one that's correct that has the slices in it, right click on that, choose copy, right click again and choose paste. So now there are two of them, but it is going the wrong way. So I have that piece left it again. Go to the right hand side toolbar under edit. Under where it says size, click on mirror and you want to have the one that's going left to right so it'll flip that guy around. Now you can see it does have the slice marks and it is going the right way. The other thing I want to do is grab the reindeer up here and you will see the color pieces are the white cardstock, all the gray pieces are the chipboard. I'm going to grab the gray reindeer and bring him down here. Go back up top and grab the holly. Just the gray pieces I want, so bring this piece down and also this piece. Now again, because I was not able to have the machine cut all the way through my chipboard, these pieces here are kind of hard to cut around because they are pretty intricate as far as the curves. So I'm actually going to be grouping these guys together and cutting them out with cereal box board. I'm going to bring these guys down here like that, bring the Rudolph down. Take my left mouse button across all three of those pieces, right click on those and choose group. I'm going to click on them again and right click and choose attach. That way they all stay like that on my mat. All right, top toolbar, go ahead and click on go. And again, this part here might take a minute or two to load because that's to load it in all the printable images. So we'll give that a second or two. And again, my machine is set to custom as far as the dial setting. Now the cardstock, you would cut that on your normal cardstock setting. When you get to the chipboard though, you want to do you do want to change that to have it be custom. All right, so there's our printed images here. And you can see there are 12 of those. You, it says here one of 15 mats. 12 of these are your cardstock and the registration marks will print out on your printer when that's done you load it through the Cricut you hit go and cut that out I'm going to come down here to the gray pieces and you can see we have four gray mats these are all of our chipboard I'm going to go ahead and click on go and again my the dial on my machine is set to custom and when I when I have that set to custom you can change the cut settings here as far as the material and it said to choose the heavyweight chipboard so we're going to go ahead and choose that I'm going to go down and grab that. It's under chipboard. So it says chipboard heavy 0.7 millimeter. I'm going to click on that one. And again, even though this setting is for chipboard, it did not cut through the medium weight chipboard without me having to go in there and fussy cut the rest of it. So again, if you want to use the medium weight, that's fine. Or you can use the, um, the lighter weight chipboard. I'm going to click on go, print all these out, cut them out, and we'll go back to the table. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Alrighty guys, we are back. Everything went ahead and cut out. And again, my chipboard that I used was the medium weight chipboard, so it did not cut all the way through. So I had the hubby go in with a box cutter and kind of cut around all the edges for me. So all them pieces are done. We have our prints here. Then we have the three pieces, which are the holly and also the reindeer that we cut out in cereal box board. All we're gonna do today is go ahead and glue these down. I'm using art glitter glue. You can get this from maymaymadeit.com. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece. I'm not gonna do all the pieces with you guys, but I'll do a few. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue, shake it down. And you do wanna go edge to edge with your glue. Okay, so we have that one lay this on top, make sure it's all lined up and even. Okay, I'm going to flip it over like I do any other kind of project and just kind of give it a rub, make sure all that glue is spread out nice and even. If you want to, you can also use a brayer. If you don't have a brayer, you can use a rolling pin or even a dowel rod will work. All right, so that piece is done. I'm going to go in and just kind of pinch along the sides really well, just to make sure the edges are down really nice. All right, that one's done. Let's move on. So now this one here, we have the two cutouts. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. All right, find that piece. And you can see this one looks like that one, but this one has a hole in it. That one does not. Let's go ahead and grab the right piece, which I believe is right here. And again, put your glue on. You want to make sure you go to the edge. 
and around any kind of slice marks you have in the pieces, you want to go around them as well. So I'm guessing this will probably be a two-part series. It'll be today's video, which is cutting everything out, um, gluing everything down, and then next Saturday we will put it all together. The longest part was the cutting and the printing. I'm going to flip it over. You can just kind of rub it down. And there's no right or wrong way on these pieces here. All right, so we have that one. Again, you want to go around the edges. Just make sure they're pinched down really well. Okay. All right, so we have those things done. Let's work on this one here, which is this one. Yeah, when I first seen this, I, was, I, mean, I thought about making this clock last year, but it seems so involved. And I was like, no way. And then it got requested by you guys. And I'm really happy with it because it, it is a really cute clock. And I like the fact that it does work as a clock. You know, it's not just like a, a mock clock, if you will. All right, so we got our glue there. I'm going to lay this one down this way just to kind of eliminate the glue on my fingers. I'll flip it over. And again, if you guys want to, if you can't find the chipboard, you can cut everything out with the uh, cereal box board. I think it's fine. If you want to, you can always double it up. You know, if you can use cereal box board, cracker box board, um, maybe go to a pizza shop and ask them if you can have a few pizza boxes. That'll work as well. All right. So there's that one. Three down and a gazillion to go. So we have, these are the side panels. So we have a Christmas tree on one and a little peppermint candy Christmas tree on the other one. So within the week, you guys want to pick up, you know, print out all your paper, cut out all of your chipboard or whatever you're going to be using for the main part of the clock, and also pick up a clock part. And it tells you the size. If you go on to the, this project and design space, it will tell you the size that you need. Again, make sure you go around them tabs really well because these are going to be poking into another piece. So make sure that paper is down really well. This would be a good project for the little ones to help you with. Maybe they can um, help you match the pieces. This is almost like a puzzle. They can do that with you. It'd be fun to put in their room at Christmas time. Another thing I did do after my clock was all put together, I thought, well, I wish it would have a little bit more sparkle to it. Um, oh, did I glue that wrong? No, okay, I thought I glued that wrong. Um, what you can do is take a little bit of Wink of Stella, if you want to, and you can go in here and kind of color in the balls on the tree. I did do it on the front part, on this part here. I did go in there with on the bulbs with the Wink of Stella, just to make it have a little bit of glitter. A little bit of sparkle to it. And I also did the um, berries on the holly as well. And again, when you have that glued on there, just go ahead and pinch down those tabs area. Really, really good. All right, so we have that one done. Alrighty, so I'll do maybe two more. We'll do these guys here. We'll do this one and we'll do two more. So that one goes here. And then tomorrow we will start the series of the um, the Christmas nativity scene. We'll do one portion of that tomorrow, and we'll do the other ones the following two Sundays. And I will warn you that one requires a lot of brown cardstock. Again, just pinch 
those edges really good. This is the back part here. I actually think this piece you can probably get away with not even covering it with paper because it's the back, you know. Alrighty, let's go ahead and go do these guys here. Let's find our Holly and our Rudolph. Isn't he adorable? I love that reindeer cut. Alright, I'm just going to match these guys up. the glue as close to the edge as you can. I'm gonna lay that flat. Oops, not that way, Stace. Okay. Yeah, I originally was gonna do this one with you guys. Um, just cut it out and assemble it all with you. And Hubby's like, well, I wanna see what the clock looks like. So I'm like, well, I have to cut out two clocks, you know, print all the paper. So he helped me today, which was nice. And he, he actually really liked the clock. I do too. I think it's a really, it's really a fun little project. Just a little bit time consuming, especially when, um, I wish the Cricut would be a little bit more detailed as far as the weight of the chipboard, because it didn't say in there. It just said chipboard. And then when you go to cut it, it said, put the dial to heavy chipboard. So I assumed that they wanted us to use heavy chipboard, but there was no way my Cricut was going to be able to cut that out. And the cereal box board, I had um, just my regular blade housing in there, and I had the custom dial set on the machine to um, poster board, I believe, and it cut out fine. I think it did do a double cut, though. I flip that over, get that little rub. I don't think I flipped that one over. And these ones are, I'm not too concerned about the edges, because they, they just kind of sit on the front of the clock. All right, then we have little Rudolph here. He is adorable, this little guy. So we'll stop the video on this one. I'll just re, you know, I'll just go back in and finish off applying all the paper to these pieces. And I'll meet you guys back here next week to where we assemble it. And that should maybe be, I'm hoping not a terribly long video, maybe about a half hour, I'm guessing. I hate to break it up into two parts, so if you guys don't mind the long video next weekend, next Saturday, we can finish the clock up. If you want to, you can also go around and ink the edges of all these pieces to kind of give them more life. All right. So there we have that. So we have a good amount done, right? So we have a few more pieces. Like I said, I'll go ahead and glue these guys or glue the paper onto all these ones. Now, um, take note, this one, it does cut out two of these pieces. Hopefully you can see them right there. This one, that one, it does cut out two. You only need one. And it's gonna print out two of these as well. These are, this piece here is double-sided because that's what the reindeer sits on. So you will see that on both sides. So you can eliminate one of them. You need one of those and your two papers will go front and back on that one. And does say that in the instructions and I did go ahead and print off of those just by doing a screen uh, a screenshot on my phone all right guys hope you enjoyed um, part one of the Christmas cuckoo clock and like I said I'll see you guys back here next Saturday hopefully not as late to finish up the clock any questions please let me know as always thanks so much for watching have a great day and I'll see you guys next time bye bye